So this week I want to talk about another aspect of 3D in Photoshop CS5 Extended that even by itself has a lot of really interesting uh, uses for it, and that is using the lights in um, 3D in a very interesting way. Now, when we create a 3D object, whether it's a 3D postcard or a repousé object or something, we've got to have lights on it to really help with the realism and illuminate the object in certain ways. And that's on a 3D object. Well, doesn't say doesn't mean we can't use those same lights, those same 3D lights, on a 2D image. Now, it's true, you do have to still put it in a 3D space, but you don't have to maneuver it around. It can look exactly as it did when you opened up the file. For instance, here, I have this simple stock image of these curtains, and what I want to do is generate a spotlight effect that you would see very commonly on a show like this, where the house lights would be down, and then you'd have the, the uh, ring of the spotlights kind of shining on the curtain there. So... To do that, using 3D, we're going to go ahead and first go ahead and turn the background layer, which is the curtain layer, and go ahead and make it a 3D postcard. So just go under the 3D menu here, go down here and choose New 3D Postcard from Layer. So it goes ahead and puts it in 3D space. You'll notice it does not change the appearance of the image in the panel. It's just that it's in a three-dimensional space now. And just to prove it, we can take our 3D Object Rotate tool and rotate this around in 3D space. And just like that. But I don't want to move it around. I don't want to change the image. I actually want to add 3D lights to this. So it is in 3D. So now what we're going to do is go over here into the window menu and open up the 3D panel. Just go under window, go to 3D. Now inside here is where you control the lights. It's the last tab at the very top of the panel here. And there's a little light bulb that indicates it. And you'll notice by default there are no lights on this 3D postcard. So what we're going to do is go in here and select the spotlight and then go down here to the bottom of the panel to the new icon here, just like in your layers panel, and go ahead and choose new spotlight. Now you'll see the light will appear. Now your, your version of Photoshop should have this and it may or may not be on automatically, but if you'll see it's got a wireframe around the light itself. And to turn that on and off, you just go to the bottom of the panel next to that new icon uh, where we created the uh, light is this little eyeball and grid shape. If you click on that, you can go down here and turn on 3D light and make sure that that is checked on. And to maneuver the light around in the 3D space, you'll need to use the 3D light tools located right here inside the 3D panel as well. It's the fourth one down, and it's these three tools right here. We can rotate it, pan it, and slide it. So what I wanna do first is actually bring it closer to me. So I'm gonna use the 3D light slide tool and then notice when I put my mouse over it, it highlights the light. And if you click and drag down, it will bring the light toward you or closer to you, making the light bigger on the overall frame or on the curtain there. So what I can do is we'll go ahead and take the 3D light pan tool and just pan this up. So you can see that the light is in 3D. It's like a cone. And I'm maneuvering the light up here so it shines on the curtain from the upper left side here. Now... Here is the problem. When I've got the light on here and it's shining on the curtain, everything looks great, but I'm not seeing the light very well. In fact, if I go ahead and turn the layer off, you can see this, the spotlight is faintly there and I want to see it a little bit more brighter than that. Well, the first impulse might be to go in here and increase the intensity of the light in the light section. Well, if you do that, let's say we go up to like three, you'll notice that it starts to just um, pretty much blow out the curtain and, and all the detail and everything like that. So don't necessarily want to do that. I'm going to go ahead and take that back to 1. And what we want to do is go over here into the third icon at the top of the 3D panel, and we have the Materials section. Now inside here, you'll, know, you'll notice you go down to the very bottom, and the second to the last item here in the panel is called Ambient. And next to that is a little color swatch. And right now it's default set to an off-white color, or pretty much white itself. So if you just click on that, it will open up the color picker, just like you would normally see in Photoshop. And if you take the color and drag it down to a darker color, it's as if you're taking down the house lights in a real theater. Notice what it's doing. We're changing that ambient light color to a darker color. Therefore, it's appearing as though the room is getting darker. But notice the area where the spotlight is is being unaffected because it's be, uh, respecting the 3D properties there. So we'll just bring that ambient light down somewhat so our light is a little bit more pronounced. And there we have it. In fact, I'm gonna go a little bit into the darker area. There we go. And again, this is always, uh, I can always go ahead, I can change this anytime I want. 
So let's go back to the light. And if I move that light around, and remember to use the 3D light uh, rotate tool, and move that light around where I position it, it's going to illuminate the curtain exactly the way I would expect it to with the lights being down. And I can go ahead and add a second light if I like. Let's go ahead and add another new spotlight. I don't have to go back and change that ambient light because it's going to go ahead and maintain that property because we're only on the one background layer. But we've got a second light here, so we'll go ahead and drag out the light here, position it to the upper right, very much like you would see in a theater. There'd be the spotlight. And look, notice the intensity gets a little bit more when they cross beams. In fact, if I go ahead and increase the intensity of one light and leave the other one alone, you'll see that one light kind of overlaps the other. One is a little bit brighter than the other, pretty much behaving like real lights would in real life. So you have the lights uh, crossing over, and you've got the illumination. Everything looks really good. So you just go in here and just select whichever spotlight you want to modify and change its position to get realistic spotlights. Now, if you want to go ahead and add another element to this, let's go ahead and add some text. So we'll just call it star because a star is born. Here we go. So we'll just go ahead and give this a color fill. Let's just give it like a yellow color fill there. Now I'm going to take this text layer and go ahead. Let's go ahead and center it real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and make that a 3D postcard as well. So again, go under 3D, new 3D postcard from layer. And if you hold down the shift key and select both layers, the new layer we just created and the layer containing the uh, curtain and the lights and everything, with both of them selected, go under the 3D menu again, and this time go down here and choose Merge 3D Layers. It's going to merge them together, yet still keep them in 3D space, and you'll notice that the text is being illuminated where the spotlight is, and it's a lot dimmer in the areas where it's not. Now, the cool part is here, based on the positioning, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and take the text, because if I take the 3D Rotate tool, the main 3D Rotate tool here in the toolbar, and rotate the entire object. You can see that the text is just a little bit sitting off of the curtain there. Well, if I take the 3D Mesh tool, and again, there's a difference between the tool here in the toolbar, in the main toolbar, and these mesh tools here in the panel. These allow you to manipulate individual objects in a 3D layer. In, in this case, we have two objects. We have the star uh, name and then the curtain itself contained in this one layer. So to manipulate just the text, I'm going to use this 3D Mesh Slide tool here in the 3D panel, then click on it and just click and drag down and it will slide the text forward. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and scale it as well so it's a little bit more forward from the curtain. And what's going on here is because it's all in the same 3D space, if I go over here into the 3D panel once again, the very first tab here at the top, if I click on that, and then go down here into the middle of the panel and choose in the quality menu, change it from interactive to ray traced draft, and it will render the shadows that are being created by the lights shining on the text, which is offset from the curtain and is casting a shadow there on it, giving it a much more realistic 3D look, all generated using the 3D lights. And notice we don't look like we have a 3D object here. It still looks like a two-dimensional image, yet we're using 3D lights in a very interesting way to get a very realistic dimensional look.